A very good evening and thanks for clicking on to the Thursday edition of Hogan's European Outlook. Uh, first and foremost, I want to make mention of the video I done yesterday. If you're entirely interested in the sudden stratospheric warming that has now occurred uh, within the 10 millibar level over the pole, I do encourage you to check out yesterday's video, which looks in quite a bit of detail. I try my best to describe exactly what has taken place within the stratosphere and the you know what what all goes into um you know the effects it may potentially have down at the surface uh, a couple of weeks after the event takes place so do check out this video if you haven't already done so and uh, you can get a little bit more in-depth analysis with regards to the ongoing sudden stratospheric warming interest in times to come that's for sure also, we have an interesting night to come as well. The Danish Met Office has named Storm Otto that is going to make an approach on the north coast of the UK overnight tonight into the early hours of tomorrow morning. And we could see some damage in wind gusts. Northwest Scotland, Outer Hebrides, and particularly so, I think, downwind of the mountains. So parts of Caithness and Sutherland, down through Aberdeenshire, uh, Tayside, Angus, Fife, the Borders, all the way down into uh, Northumberland, Tyneside, Yorkshire, these areas that are to the east of the mountains may find themselves getting quite the whipping during the early hours of tomorrow morning as the centre, even though it stays to the north of the UK, it has impacts. And I'll talk that, about that in a little bit more detail in, in just a second here. Current temperatures as a recording at 17.38 in the evening. Relatively mild across the north, uh, down to 4 or 5 Celsius. Uh, very mild across more southern areas, Northern Ireland, Ireland, England, Wales. We've got temperatures well in the double figures. We've even got temperatures, you know, at this stage in the evening, 13 Celsius. Exceptionally mild, of course, for the time of the year. Albeit we do have a system coming in during the overnight tonight. Winds are not particularly strong at the moment. As you can see here, very light generally across the board, especially across the north, especially where it's the north, that uh, the north and down the eastern side of Scotland, England, will get the, the strongest winds probably overnight tonight. We've actually got the, the, the lightest winds um, across the UK at the moment. We had um, a feature that moved through England and Wales during the course of today that brought uh, some increased wind um, during the period um, looking at the current radar of weather online, you can see here some sporadic rain areas to speak about, some heavy pulses across parts of Western Northern Ireland, Southwest Scotland, Northwest England, as you can see here, largely high and dry across areas that have seen barely a drop of rain in the last month or so. Now looking at the situation tonight, so this is off the GFS here and we we'll have this deepening area of low pressure that is going to make an approach uh, close to the northern half of the British Isles. So we're going to steadily bring that shield of moisture in ahead of the centre. And we are going to see a, a spell of heavy, persistent rainfall, squally winds, some you know potential damage in wind gusts, even with the frontal system moving through. You know, 50, 60 mile per hour winds wouldn't surprise me along that boundary, that frontal system that moves, uh, you know, west to east across the north of the UK. Higher pressure further south means that uh, it stays generally to the north of England and Wales. Now, as you notice here, notice these, these, little, these little kinks in the isobars. That indicates that the, the modelling is actually picking up on the topography, the North Pennines. As these winds then sweep across the top of these mountains, they're going to bump over the top of them. And then essentially as they cross over to the east of the Pennines, the winds actually accelerate as they come off the topography. And that is the concern. So, you know, the M1 is susceptible. We've got the, the A90 running up the east coast of Scotland with north-south oriented road network and these winds coming in from a generally west uh, west um, orientation you've got of course high-sided vehicles that will be running 
with the wind to their left to the to the to the left hand side of the vehicle or to the right bear in mind if you're heading south of course and there is an increased concern that we have some of these winds accelerating off either the Grampians or indeed the Pennines um, that we have um, trouble with possible blowing over of vehicles and whatnot. Of course, I'm a high side of vehicle myself, uh, not literally, um, I drive a high side of vehicle. <laughs> um, so I would fully expect to be getting blown around quite significantly tonight. I don't believe I'm in a double decker tonight. I think I'm in a single deck straight frame trailer this evening driving uh, typically between Inverness and Glasgow so I'll be on the road I'll be I'll be on the N9 tonight I would expect to get blown around quite a wee bit but I think it's it's really areas to the east of the Grampians the Pennines uh, that we could see some trouble with regards to uh, those gusts but the core of the system then moves uh, generally to stand to the north of Scotland as you can see and then it's really the squeeze in the isobars just in that southwest quadrant of the center that we're going to see the damage in wind gusts. So northwesterly winds will be really whipping 65 to 75 miles per hour. Nothing extreme, but when you do sometimes get these winds accelerating to the lee of the mountains, you can actually get higher gusts than, than even what the models are predicting. So we'll need to keep an eye on that, I think, as we go through the course of tonight and into tomorrow morning. That system eventually clears out. And the reason why the Danish Met Office has named this Storm Otto is because the centre continues to deepen, stays generally to the north of Denmark, and we've got this very, very strong wind coming in on the south flank of that centre, off the North Sea, onto the west coast of Denmark. We could see some coastal flooding, for example, as well, if there's high tide at the same time the strongest wind core arrives. Then we've got another system, as you can see here, moving in to the British Isles here. With the centre of that actually kind of staying more, a little bit further south, there's a little bit of colder air associated with that. Bear in mind, we've got colder coming in on the back side of the auto. Then that feature moves into that slightly colder air. We could see um, more in the way of, of hill snow, for example, with this secondary feature that moves in during the course of Saturday. But of course, this is off the GFS model and you know um we'll have to wait and see exactly timing position strength all aspects that need to be considered looking at the gfs wind uh, gust scenario for this evening you can see here this is auto moving in uh, as you can see here the strongest winds on the south the southwesterly flank across particularly uh, through the the, the the outer hebrides anywhere from barra all the way up to to the top of lewis uh, very susceptible to some of those damaging wind gusts in excess of 70 75 miles per hour. might get road gust in excess of 80 miles per hour then of course it's uh, down that west coast up uh, the northwest highlands uh, we also have to watch out to the east of that parts of um parts of caithness sutherland into parts of rosshire the inverness area along the murray coast in the parts of aberdeenshire down to side that is, and all the way down into Tyneside in Yorkshire, uh, we could be seeing some very, very powerful wind gusts uh, during the early hours of tomorrow morning. And then it progresses across the North Sea. The centre stays generally to the south, uh, just just across the southern flank of Norway, as you can see here. But you've got these grey gray colours here representing wind gusts in excess of 140, 150 kilometres per hour which is in the, the 100 mile per hour range. This is off the ECMWF, and you can see here, this is the overview chart. In comes auto during the overnight tonight. A spell, maybe a, a couple of hours of heavy persistent rain, uh, gusty winds associated with that front, and then the core of the strongest winds arrives on the backside of that frontal system, and it's really on that this region here and to the east of the mountains, um, that we, we will see the strongest wind gusts, uh, you know, generally from about 3 a.m. to about probably about 9 or 10 a.m. Then the system eventually moves out. Staying windy throughout the course of tomorrow, I think across the north, generally speaking. And then in comes that secondary feature I showed you off the GFS. This is the ECMWF version. The center, slightly further south, tapping into colder air left behind by auto. And then, of course, it has slightly colder associated with it anyway. So, 
any snowfall, I think generally high elevation, but some of the high road routes, of course, could be affected. Ferry services, flights out of Inverness, for example, Stornoway, Wick, Aberdeen, could all be affected by the wind. Bridges as well, so the Dornock, the Keswick, the Sky, um, will uh, possibly not the Sky Bridge because that's a, a west east, uh, oriented um bridge. It's more likely to be the Dornock and the the Keswick Bridge that will be affected because they are north south oriented. So you've got the winds coming in from the west. So I need to keep an eye on that, of course. Looking at the winds of the GFS model and um. You can see here what it's indicating, some very powerful winds indeed. Um, so we'll play through the loop here. In comes the core of strongest winds. Those greys, by the way, represent 150 kilometers per hour. So look at the top in uh, Lewis, Northwest Highlands, uh, right through the Pentland Firth. We could have some very powerful winds, possibly in excess of 80 miles an hour, by the way, especially where you've not got any restriction, uh, uh, you know, uh, frictional effects of land. Um and then that that core of strongest winds out over the North Sea is say uh, 161 kilometers per hour. So very strong winds indeed associated with this. Look at any any kind of snow prospects. Uh, we can have a quick look and see what it's indicating here over the next. I've not actually seen this, so I'm only seeing it for the first time. Like yourselves, you can see here. Um, the ECMWF certainly printing out a relatively decent covering. Uh, with any kind of elevation, if you notice here, um, upwards of 12, 13, 15, 16 centimetres, that would probably be um, about three or 400 metres above sea level. But I wouldn't be surprised, actually, if we start to see some snow over high road routes of Scotland with this type of situation. Looking at the 850 temperatures, of course, we're looking at next week as well. And uh, let's have a look and see what the latest... Uh, GFS is indicating here. So we'll, we're looking at the 850s because it generally gives you a, a better idea in terms of the column, in terms of the air mass that is involved. So there's auto moving into Scandinavia, cold in the backside, staying warm if you notice here across Ireland, the bulk of England and Wales, particularly the southern portion of England and Wales. We've got uh, some very mild air even at 5,000 feet above our heads. Then the next feature comes in uh, not a great deal of colder to play with, but enough to potentially bring some high elevation snowfall. Then as we play into the late, late weekend and the early next week, we've got more mild air coming in. That's just been the theme throughout the month of February so far. I think in terms of any kind of true winter weather, we can write off the rest of this uh, this month, generally speaking. Uh, but it is going to still be interesting to see uh, you know, the period mid to late next week here so the models are back and forth with a kind of north or north to east orientated uh, airflow and of course we, if we get any kind of north or northeasterly airflow coming into the uk we will get colder conditions coming back in i say you're right off the month of february it's going to wind up milder than average significantly milder significantly drier than average across the uk this could be one of the warmest driest february's on record by the way for the uk but the latest run of the gfa is certainly indicating that we do have got that northerly blast high pressure uh, kind of pushes out towards the west of the uk opens the door to something a lot colder coming in from the north as you can see here and then as the will progress in the thursday the 23rd You've got that area of high pressure kind of like, like kind of leans almost tilts towards the northern half of the UK. That may send a bit of a north to east wind coming in around that area of high pressure. And of course, bearing in mind we've got colder air gathering over Scandinavia. So the finer details, position, orientation, shape, how much cold air is over the continent, over Scandinavia, all has to be taken into consideration. So there's a lot of uncertainty actually with regards to next week. So you know the script now. Keep it right here on my YouTube channel. Keep it right here on marfogenweather.com as well. We'll continue to watch this scenario as we go forward. Still a long way off. We're only on Thursday. We're talking about a week away from now. But certainly with what's going on within the stratosphere, very interesting times to come. The Man Julian oscillation looks to be heading back into colder phases once again. Other aspects, other teleconnections within the Pacific, all involved in what could be a very interesting month of March to come. So keep it right here. 
subscribe if you haven't already done so see you again hopefully tomorrow with more bye for now